Bah damn, in this video, I wanna to talk to you about how to build a strong aesthetic chest. What's going on guys and gals? Chris with the Bah Damn channel. This channel is all about food, fitness, and how to live an active, healthy lifestyle. Follow me at Bah Damn on Instagram, and don't forget to get the free guide, 10 Muscle Building Tips. I think you'll really enjoy it. It is the first link down below. In this video, I have four tips on how to build a strong aesthetic chest. So hopefully you can take these tips and start building a really awesome sculpted chest in your hometown. All right, so this right here, this chest is, doesn't have a pump to it or anything like that. This is kind of like an everyday look for me. And quite honestly, like I've dialed it down to four really good tips I wanted to give you. And the very first tip is uh, training your chest twice a week, all right? So if you have a lot of time to on your hands, maybe three, that's okay. But typically most people that want to build a strong aesthetic chest have to do it in two parts and you'll see why. So you want to do two days a week minimum. And I like to have these things kind of spaced apart from each other. So one day, usually on Monday for me, it's International Chest Day, let's face it, right? But yeah, Monday is a heavy chest day for me. And so I do chest, shoulders, uh, triceps, and I even do quads. So the workout's usually about an hour and a half sometimes a little bit longer. But on the chest portion, I'm doing it super heavy, right? And that's really important because somewhere in the tail end of the week, around like Thursday or something, I'm gonna do a light chest day. So let's take it back to the heavy chest day on Monday, like what I do. And it's really important that the exercise selection you pick really lines up with building a big chest. So, you know, having a nice, you know, strong aesthetic looking chest is two parts. One is you wanna put it under some serious stress so it can grow in mass. The second thing you want to do is actually hit it to sculpt it, all right, which is more for like the other day that you work out the chest. So on Monday, when I do, uh, you know, heavy chest or something like that, I want to make sure that I'm using barbell type movements most importantly. So this can be like bench press, incline bench press, or even Smith incline bench press. Those are the three that are almost always going to be part of my mass building chest routine because we want to get the muscle to be really really hit hard and give it about two days of rest you know with adequate uh, nutrition and everything like that and then we hit it again for like thursday or maybe friday and we do sculpting all right now sculpt day is going to be more flies dumbbell work things like that on a heavy day i typically like to have my reps in the three to eight range okay and i like to do about four sets uh, for each thing. So if I'm doing a bench press on a Monday, right, I want it to be heavy and I want it to be low reps, three to eight max. Uh, and I'll do four sets of that, maybe four sets of incline bench press as well. And then on Thursday, which is more like the sculpting day, I like to keep my reps between 10 and 12 reps. All right. And those movements, as discussed earlier, are going to be flies, cable things, um, and also dumbbell work, things that really kind of isolate and start to really sculpt the outer, the inner, and things like that when it deals with the chest. So the second tip I want to give you is what we were kind of talking about, which is the exercise selection has to be really dialed in. So just remember on your heavy day that you're going to be doing more barbell type work if you want to start building the mass of the chest. We really want to disrupt the muscle and tear it down heavily on a heavy day. And the contrast to that is a sculpting day, which has much higher rep ranges, right? And those, you're going to want to make sure that you, in, you know, involve a lot of control, okay? And you involve a whole lot of concentration because you really want to get in that muscle and get that full range of motion. So that's for like flies and, uh, you know, dumbbell work, uh, cable work, things like that. Those are more higher rep. And that's the second tip I wanted to give you is basically your, your exercise selection has to be really, really dialed in. The third tip I want to give you is nutrition, right? So there's a thing called DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. And if you actually work out your chest properly and put it under a lot of load, then you should have soreness, okay, the next day and usually the day after that as well. Now, if you're getting DOMS on the chest uh, muscle in the 72 hour range, which is like the third day it's still sore, you might be going a little too hard on your chest muscles. You might want to just scale it back a little bit. You really want your chest to be sore. Like I did, I did chest today uh, about two hours ago and I want my chest to feel sore tomorrow when I'm pressing into it. And then a little bit of soreness on Wednesday when I'm pushing into it. But on Thursday when I re-hit it again for like the higher volume day, I shouldn't feel anything when I press into my chest no matter where I'm pressing it. So with that, nutrition is very important as well because on the days that I lift, I eat a lot of food. Like I have a lot of protein. Sometimes my protein number will be anywhere between one, 
gram per pound of body weight to 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body weight. And that's the most important thing that I like to look at is like my protein number. Very, very important. Outside of that, I keep my carbs and my fats about equal, but my protein number is something that I'm kind of thinking about heavily on those days that I work out because, you know, that soreness is your muscle basically torn. It's like inflamed and it needs nutrition to get back to normal to a slightly stronger, slightly bigger state. So proper nutrition is very, very important, especially on the days that you lift. The last tip I want to give you is interesting, right? And this is something that I learned out of Arnold Schwarzenegger's book, uh, which was the Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding. Uh, read this book probably two decades ago, and I've taken a lot of things from this book. So it's a really good book to get. Um, but the, one of the most important tips I got out of that book, and I'll relate it to you, is to pose or squeeze in between your sets. So say you do a bench press set, right? You do your eight or you do your three of bench press and you're sitting there, right? And on a heavy day, you wanna take a lot longer rest, sometimes in a two to three minute range. Whereas on a light day in between your sets, you wanna take maybe 45 seconds to maybe, you know, a minute, uh, something like that. What's important to do between the sets is to squeeze. So if I'm working my chest out in between each time that I bench press or I do a cable fly or something, I wanna, you know, press forward and get this chest nice and filled with blood. So that's why we pose, that's why we, you know, do things like that squeeze type movements is because we wanna keep that blood in this area so it's ready for the next set, if that makes any amount of sense. So you might look kinda of goofy doing this in the gym, but you'll get much faster results if you do that. Now, if you're just sitting there and in between your sets you're on your phone or something like that, it's the worst possible thing you can do, all right? Unless you're tracking your workouts, but typically what I do before the entire exercise goes down, whether it be bench press or a cable fly, I know exactly what I need to do so that way in between the sets I don't have to pick up my phone and I actually can just sit there and focus on posing. So I do this a lot and you're watching this on the video right now but if you put your palms together like this and you press forward you can really keep a lot of blood in that chest region just by doing this, okay? This is one of the lead poses that I do or squeezes that I do. There's like a million different poses you can do but like the main one that I like to do to keep the blood in my chest region is just basically take it from a lengthened state to a much shortened state like this where it's like feels like a ball there's like no much there's no more squeeze that i can do it until this you know at this point like this is it so i like to do this between my sets and i hold for about 20 seconds then i relax that blood is still there and it's ready for the next set so these are four quick tips i wanted to give you guys let me know what you want me to film for the next bot damn video put a comment down below i am reading all the comments and it'd be really cool if you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel too i hope you guys are doing well out there until the next bot damn video take it easy goodbye